Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I have Bezaminia by Nina Bunjevac. Please excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that name correct. This is another one of the books that I picked up in Fanagraphics Fanabuck sale. I pre-ordered everything I wanted from Fanagraphics for the entire year and then cashed out all of my gift certificates for books like this one that I've had an eye on and a bunch of books that I hadn't heard of that look cool. Um, definitely had my eye on this one for a while because of the artwork the beautiful design on this book and really really beautiful production there is something about the art that i wanted to take a closer look at to confirm if if it was a production issue or if what i thought was going on was going on so i took a scan we'll take a look at that um, because the way the artist worked is really interesting but it definitely would have provided a, a massive production challenge to fanographics and given some of their other black and white work that i've been looking at lately i'm really really impressed with how how they pulled off the production on this book um, the book itself is really interesting structure and really kind of a harrowing story especially when you read the afterwards uh the artist telling a story that of her own life um, the book itself is pretty much like these stars talking and telling each other a story which immediately is interesting to me because we use that same <coughs> technique in You Don't Know Jack, where we had Dave's voice always being attached to a star field, and especially in this story where he he's uh, taking Jack's command to tell teach children not to be rapists, teaching children not to be rapists. Um, so it's interesting to see that same thing here. I definitely think the star field in this is much more beautiful. It looks like she had a scratch board and just scratched out these barely there stars. It reminds me a lot, a lot, a lot of Vija Selman's star fields. And it has that on the cover too. Just this very sparse, beautiful, perfect star field that you would get from a Vija Selman star painting. Um, so that's absolutely gorgeous. I probably should have scanned that and taken a look at it up close too. Because it looks like she might have been pulling the same trick here to help get the glow it's really, really smart stuff. Uh, so it's these stars are telling a story about a priestess in tra training, Bezaminia, um, and she gets grabbed by some of the other priestesses and dunked in the water, head, head first into the water. And at that point, she goes through a portal and emerges in this baby. And you can see here just the absolutely gorgeous art. Um, here's the baby. This really impressive combination of cross hatching and stippling that gives a really nice like skin texture balanced against these big thick contour lines and big dark areas of black. But Bezaminia is born again as a boy. And this boy is a troubled kid. And the, most of the book then is the story of Benny, the boy and how he's kind of a sexual pervert from early age and he grows up basically to have a kind of schizophrenic fantasy uh, that leads him to raping a bunch of children um, and that that's the story of the book I don't want to flip through it too much more because there's some pretty sexually explicit content in here so if you're uh, uncomfortable with that kind of thing don't get this book but if you're okay with that I'd, I'd highly recommend it um, at the end of the book then Bezaminia comes back out of the water and basically sheds a tear after Benny Benny kills himself I guess I'll give away we'll give away spoilers here at the end comes back out and sheds a tear and they're asking her who were you crying for um, and then the author, Nina Bunjavak, goes on in the author, author's afterward to explain that as a teenager, she was invited by another teenager to go over to a cabin in a small Serbian town where she grew up and that she had been recorded while this older middle-aged man tried to sexually assault her and luckily was able to get away was and then later in life also ex when she had moved to Canada was um, sexually assaulted as well but was able again to get away and uh, but her, her friend who had invited there obviously hadn't and so she's saying that this whole book 
is her attempt to try and understand why someone would do that. And I just, like, to me, that's such a powerful thing to even be willing to, like, try and empathize with people who have done so much harm to you. Um, and I think especially in the way conversations happen these days, I mean, you don't ever want to empathize with or excuse that kind of behavior. But it's better than the vilifying, I think. Um, trying to understand it is maybe the best way to defeat it instead of just like shouting it down. So to me, this is like a ridiculously brave and thoughtful book. Um, yeah, it's just really impressive piece of writing. And the, the art is insanely cool. Uh, so I, I want to now flip over to the scan that I took and show what it was that I was kind of questioning in the art um, because she's using a lot of different techniques. The scan I have, I don't think has the splatter, but she, she uses cross hatching, stippling, splattering. And then I'll show you the fourth thing that I was looking at, wanting to see if it was a printing issue or if it was something the artist was doing. Okay. Here's the scan I took of a page from Bezamenia. I scanned it at 1200 DPI so we could really get in and see what was going on. What I was seeing during the book was that it seemed like in a lot of the areas where there was dense cross hatching, that there was also like a gray tone being put over it. It wasn't just the hatching. And I couldn't tell because some of the, the uh, hatching lines that are out in the white areas looked a little fuzzy to me, which seemed like, okay, well, maybe they half toned the, the line work. This, you know, this stuff I'm learning, working with Sean, learning to detect. And I've seen it in a couple other Fantagraphics books. Well, I'm used to the really good production from them, but the, it looks like they're getting these weird halftone stuff on their, their black lines. So I was thinking maybe that was what was going on and it was causing the illusion of kind of like a gray filling in. But on this page in particular, and I like this one also because it shows how she uses... Um, cross hatching with stippling to kind of mimic a skin texture both describing the form of the hand and kind of the triangular pattern of skin but also a dot pattern to show the pores i thought that was really sophisticated but this page gave away the trick because i noticed on the nose um, you can see right here there's some dots there and that reads at size as a pencil mark that was left over. And that was what I was wondering is it look like the artist was maybe going back in and also coloring in areas like this that are densely crosshatched, coloring in really lightly with the pencil. Um, and that is what's going on. And it creates a really, really subtle kind of extra bit of volume to the art and if we zoom in really close here you can really see how much of that is half tone that light pencil work all of those dots in there um, and then when you come up into the cross hatching you can see that real small weave of half tone dots as well so i don't know if that was done on the actual art or if that was done later on another layer um, but it it does I don't know, the integrity of the lines look pretty good, except when you get that halftone pattern up next to them, then obviously they like make the edge look kind of dotty. So I'm not sure how this was produced, but it's a really interesting technique that looks really beautiful. I'm sure if it was done on the original art, whoever had to scan this and prepare it was dealing with a really troubling challenge of having to isolate out those areas and half tone them without uh you know getting this kind of stuff here in the line work so i think probably the whole thing was half toned had to be half toned because of how she produced the art um, so the lines don't maintain total integrity but the overall effect when you look at the book is just like this really really three-dimensional really well sculpted i mean you kind of get it on the screen but it's a really beautiful subtle technique I'm kind of curious. I'm going to have to maybe bring this up to Sean in an episode, seeing like, what, what could you possibly do with this? But I'm really, really impressed with the production of this book, especially given that extra tricky little bit there.
Um, so I would highly recommend this book, highly recommend checking it out uh, if you haven't. It's an impactful story, and as you can see from this, it's just astonishing art. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. Who wants to see all these books? Smash!